Dear student, I am Dr. Prakash Mungli, Professor of Biochemistry. So in this lecture, I will be explaining you heme catabolism and transport of bilirubin. Now let's get into the details. Now the heme, it is catabolized into initially into bilirubin and then it is catabolized into bilirubin. So bilirubin is the end product of heme. So all heme containing proteins, so whenever they undergo turnover, so the heme, it will be converted into bilirubin and bilirubin is transported out of the liver into the intestine and it will be exported out of our body. Okay. So out of all the bilirubin that is made in our body, that is uh, about 250 to 350 milligrams of bilirubin that is produced in our body every day. So out of that 70 to 80 percent of that total bilirubin which is made in our body, it is coming from degradation of hemoglobin that is present in the red blood cell. As you all know, red blood cell has got hemoglobin and one red blood cell has got around 300 million hemoglobin molecules and red blood cell lives for 120 days. So after that 120 days when the red blood cell breaks, so especially the breakage of old red blood cell will be going on in the spleen, splenic sinusoids, so hemoglobin will be released and that hemoglobin that is Hb will be initially converted into bilirubin and bilirubin is converted into bilirubin okay so about 6 gram of hemoglobin will undergo turnover every day in that 1 gram of hemoglobin which will be equal to about 35 milligrams of bilirubin so that means 6 grams of hemoglobin times 35 milligrams of bilirubin made for each gram so which will contribute around 200 to 300 milligrams of bilirubin that is made per day which has to undergo turnover and so that's what is the amount of bilirubin which is coming from hemoglobin degradation so otherwise all heme containing proteins will undergo degradation whenever the when when the half life of these proteins will be done so, what, where exactly is the bilirubin formation is going on? Where exactly heme is degraded? So, heme is degraded mainly in the reticuloendothelial cells. So, where exactly is the reticuloendothelial cells? Reticuloendothelial cells are found in the liver, found in the spleen and also found in the bone marrow. So, that means uh, red blood cells which are done with their lifetime for 120 days usually they are taken out of the system in the spleen. So reticuloendothelial cells in the spleen is going to break heme into bilirubin, and bilirubin is converted to bilirubin and bilirubin is transported out of the spleen into the blood and from the blood it is taken up by the liver and liver is going to process that bilirubin and put that into biliary canaliculi and so that it go into gallbladder and when the gallbladder is contracting at that time it enters into the duodenum so that's the process here so a uh, reticuloendothelial system which has got a uh, heme oxygenase enzyme so the reticuloendothelial system present in the spleen liver and bone marrow will express a uh, heme oxygenase enzyme and this heme oxygenase enzyme what it does is going to break heme into bilirubin. So during this process, when the heme is broken down into bilirubin, there will be release of uh, iron, a uh, ferrous iron, which is uh, released there, and that ferrous iron is converted to ferric iron, and along with that, there will be release of carbon monoxide. So heme oxygenase it breaks heme, a porphyrin ring present in the heme, and convert that into bilirubin, and during this process. A uh, ferrous siren is released as ferric iron and also there will be release of carbon monoxide and this carbon this is the only source of carbon monoxide in our body so that means amount of carbon monoxide that is exhaled in the breath or that is produced in our body it is equal to the amount of heme that is converted to bilirubin so indirectly 
we can measure the amount of hemolysis that is going on in our body if you measure the carbon monoxide levels okay and what happens to the bilirubin bilirubin is further converted into bilirubin and that is done by bilirubin reductase enzyme okay so with the help of heme oxygenase and bilirubin reductase so heme is ultimately converted into bilirubin and the type of bilirubin that is made it is referred as unconjugated bilirubin molecule so that is what is shown here in the figure as you see so the heme with the porphyrin ring and ferrous iron in the center here it is converted into bilirubin where the porphyrin ring is opened up and the heme oxygenase enzyme is going to break that porphyrin ring open it up and release ferrous iron as ferric iron and also there is a release of carbon monoxide and as i told you already this is the only source of carbon monoxide in our body and this carbon monoxide is carried in our blood and it can be exhaled in the breath okay so the if you measure the amount of carbon monoxide in the expired air and that is proportionate to the heme breakdown that is going on in the reticuloendothelial system okay now the bilirubin that is made here it is converted into bilirubin by bilirubin reductase enzyme okay so where a bilirubin is made and this bilirubin is unconjugated bilirubin it is referred as unconjugated bilirubin because it is a water insoluble form of bilirubin water insoluble that means it cannot be carried in the blood directly from spleen to the liver so it has to be carried by binding to albumin or some carrier protein okay so this type of bilirubin which is not soluble in water is referred as unconjugated bilirubin okay so let's see what happens so this unconjugated bilirubin that is predominantly made in the spleen it has to be transported uh, to the liver so how it is done so bilirubin formed in the reticuloendothelial cells is or water insoluble so albumin is the transporter of such bilirubin from a spleen and bone marrow to the liver okay so albumin has got two binding sites for a bilirubin one is a high affinity binding site where it will bind to up to 25 mg of bilirubin per deciliter of blood so as long as the amount of bilirubin that is entering into the blood is less than 25 mg per deciliter it will especially the unconjugated bilirubin so it will bind to the high affinity binding site okay anything in excess of 25 mg per deciliter it will bind to the low affinity binding site and note that as the name says low affinity binding site do not hold on to bilirubin it is loosely bound bilirubin it can be taken out of that low affinity binding site and it can cross the blood brain barrier and all that so whenever a blood bilirubin level especially unconjugated bilirubin level whenever it exceeds 25 mg per deciliter which is binding to the low affinity binding site so that type of bilirubin can cross the blood brain barrier and it can lead to a neurological issues referred as kernicterus and always remember when unconjugated bilirubin is more than 25 mg per deciliter it is it lead to a risk of kernicterus which is a neurological issue that is seen in people who exceed their unconjugated bilirubin more than 25 mg per deciliter okay so this is how a uh, unconjugated bilirubin that is made in the uh, spleen and bone marrow are carried to the liver by binding to the albumin what happens to this bilirubin which is brought to the liver by binding to albumin okay now bilirubin in the liver is taken up bilirubin uptake and it is conjugated in the liver so how it is conjugated and how it is taken up so bilirubin which is carried by albumin it enters into the hepatocytes by very large capacity carrier mediated saturable bilirubin transporter so there is a bilirubin transporter as it is shown in the figure here this is the bilirubin transporter so which is taking up bilirubin which is bound to albumin so albumin is separated bilirubin enters into uh, hepatocyte so this is a high capacity very large capacity 
transporter it's a bidirectional transporter remember that okay so once bilirubin enters into the hepatocytes within the hepatocyte bilirubin transiently it will bind with glutathione s transferase gst glutathione s transferase okay so it is a momentarily it binds to that so after that what happens so this glutathione s transferase bound bilirubin now it is catalyzed by an enzyme called UDP glucuronosyl transferase 1A1 enzyme. So the UDP glucuronosyl transferase 1A1 enzyme, what it does, it is going to add UDP glucuronate. UDP glucuronate, glucuronate molecule. It's a oxidized form of glucose. UDP glucuronate. It will be added to bilirubin. UDP glucuronate is added to bilirubin to make it as bilirubin monoglucuronate. Bilirubin monoglucuronate. So that is BMG. Bilirubin monoglucuronate. And now this bilirubin monoglucuronate is added with one more UDP glucuronate. Basically, glucuronate is added, UDP will be released. It's not that UDP glucuronate entire thing is added. It's only glucuronate is added, UDP just goes out. So one more glucuronate will be added to bilirubin monoglucuronate and that will make bilirubin diglucuronate and that's what is shown here. So UGT1A1 enzyme adding UDP glucuronate coming into the reaction, glucuronate added, UDP released making BMG bilirubin monoglucuronate which is added with one more glucuronate molecule making bilirubin diglucuronate and now this bilirubin diglucuronate it is ready for transport out of the hepatocyte into the biliary canal cry. So overall what happened in the liver? Liver is conjugating the unconjugated bilirubin. Note that bilirubin that is coming into the liver from the spleen, it is not conjugated. That means it is not water soluble. It's a water insoluble bilirubin. So by adding two molecules of glucuronate, so we are converting, the liver is converting a water insoluble bilirubin into water soluble bilirubin and this type of bilirubin we call it as conjugated bilirubin. So spleen is making unconjugated bilirubin whereas liver is making conjugated bilirubin. It is going to conjugate bilirubin with glucuronate. So remember glucuronate is a conjugating molecule and it comes into the reaction as UDP glucuronate and the enzyme that is adding glucuronate to a bilirubin is UDP glucuronosyl transferase 1A1 enzyme and also note that this UDP glucuronosyl transferase 1A1 is also deconjugate like conjugating, uh, a conjugating enzyme it participates in detoxification reaction of certain drugs and chemicals and also conjugation of bilirubin here in the liver is a type of detoxification because excess levels of unconjugated bilirubin may lead to neurological condition called kernictrus. So this unconjugated bilirubin has to be excreted out of our body. So that's the purpose of conjugating it. It's a type of deconjugation. So glucuronosyl transferase 1A1, it is participating in that reaction. Now let's see what happens to conjugated bilirubin. Now the water soluble conjugated bilirubin, usually the bilirubin diglucuronate is the one that is secreted out of the liver into the biliary canaliculi. And this particular uh, transport mechanism is done by MRP2 transporter. What is MRP2 transporter? It is multi-drug resistance like protein 2 which is also called as MOAT that is multi-specific organic anion transporter. So it is the rate limiting transporter for conjugated bilirubin. That means the amount of bilirubin that is secreted out of the hepatocyte it all depends on the, con uh, the transport capacity of MOAT that is multi-organic and multi-specific organic anion transporter. Okay, so the hepatic transport of conjugated bilirubin into the bile is induced by drugs like phenobarbiturates. That means whenever a person is taking phenobarbiturates, so phenobarbiturates, it is going to induce UDP GT1A1 enzyme. And when these enzymes are induced by phenobarbiturates because it's a detoxifying enzyme, 
it is going to add udp glucuronate glucuronate to phenobarbitrates and alpha detoxification process so since udp gt1 a1 are induced by phenobarbitrates so it helps in the conjugation process to a bilirubin bilirubin conjugation is also helped in that trip, uh, process and also they are going to induce the moat transporter thereby more and more conjugated bilirubin can be transported out of the liver so here is the summary of bilirubin uptake conjugation and secretion by the hepatocyte so bilirubin in the blood coming from the spleen it is bound to albumin so up to 25 mg of bilirubin binding to high affinity binding site and more than 25 mg means it will bind to the low affinity binding site and that will be taken up by the hepatocyte so bilirubin taken up by the hepatocyte which is an unconjugated bilirubin so the conjugation process is going on now in the liver and that will be done by ugt 1 a1 enzyme where udp glucuronate is getting into the reaction and only glucuronate is added udp is released so two molecules of uh, glucuronates are added to the bilirubin and making bilirubin diglucuronide note that bilirubin diglucuronide is a conjugated water soluble bilirubin and this conjugated water soluble bilirubin is the one that is secreted into the biliary canal alkali and from the biliary canal alkali it is getting into the gallbladder and it is stored there and when the gallbladder contracts so bilirubin enters into the duodenum so if there is any issues here if there is any defect in the uptake of bilirubin from the blood or if there is any issue with the conjugation of bilirubin in the liver or if there is any issue with the secretion of bilirubin from the hepatocyte all of that will lead to increase in bilirubin levels in the blood so some of the disorders that are mentioned here like a defect in the conjugation or decrease in the conjugation may lead to neonatal jaundice toxic jaundice krigler nazar syndrome gilbert syndrome or if there is any defect in the secretion of bilirubin out of the liver it may lead to dobin johnson syndrome rotor syndrome so there are different issues that can happen if there is any uh, defects in any one of these process so first thing is we should know what is the normal uh, uh, process of handling bilirubin once we know normal then we can understand what is the uh, pathogenesis in abnormality okay so that's about how uh, bilirubin, uh, bilirubin is taken up conjugated and secreted now what will happen to the bilirubin that goes to the uh, gallbladder when it goes out of the liver which is stored in the gallbladder from the gallbladder it is entering into the duodenum so once it enters into the duodenum so this conjugated bilirubin in the intestine what will happen to this so the conjugated bilirubin which is attached with uh, two glucuronate molecules it enters into the duodenum and it is not taken up by the intestinal mucosal cells so basically it is just moving on to the ileum and colon so as it moves from duodenum to terminal ileum and colon so the bacteria will secrete uh, bacterial beta glucuronidase enzymes this beta glucuronide uh, glucuronidase enzyme because we have bilirubin diglucuronate which is entering into the duodenum water soluble so now this bilirubin diglucuronate is converted into just bilirubin because there will be unconjugation there will be release of two glucuronate two glucuronate molecules will be taken out by these these enzymes beta glucuronidase enzymes they will remove those glucuronate molecules convert bilirubin diglucuronate into just bilirubin that is unconjugated this is ucb unconjugated bilirubin okay now this unconjugated bilirubin further it will be oxidized into urobilinogen ubg because this is done by again bacteria 80 to 90% of this urobilinogen it will be excreted in the feces it will go out of the intestine into the feces 80 to 90% of it only 10 to 20% of urobilinogen ubg is uh, reabsorbed reabsorbed and that will appear in the urine it, some less than 3% of that or sorry less than 3 mg per deciliter of that will appear in the urine so major fate of this conjugated bilirubin that is entering into the duodenum is to go into urobilinogen formation 
and that urobilinogen is excreted predominantly into the feces. This is how we are going to get rid of a bilirubin out of our body. Remember uh, when the red blood cell dies, when so much bilirubin is really uh, coming out like 200 to 300 milligram of bilirubin per day coming from breakdown of red blood cell. So, it is all conjugated in the liver, brought by the spleen, conjugated in the liver, secreted into the biliary canal cli, going into the duodenum and in the duodenum, uh, bilirubin diglucuronide, which is water soluble, is converted to unconjugated bilirubin by deconjug deconjugation process and unconjugated bilirubin is further oxidized into urobilinogen by the bacteria and 80 to 90 percent of that urobilinogen is going out of our body. This is the way that we excrete bilirubin out of our body. Only 10 to 20 percent undergoes enterohepatic circulation and in that less than 3, milli 3 milligram which, es es which escapes hepatic uptake, it will appear in the urine and that will become part of uh, urine urobilinogen. So, color of normal yellowish color of the urine is because of presence of urobilinogen and also the color of feces that yellowish color of feces is also because of the presence of uh, urobilinogen which can be further oxidized into stercobilinogen and which will become stercobilin which is a colored molecule remember that okay so here is the overview of all the process uh, that we have seen so far let's begin from hemoglobin itself so, we have hemoglobin where globin is separated and heme is released. Uh, remember, this happens in the spleen mostly. And heme is converted to biliverdin by heme oxygenase enzyme. Carbon monoxide is released there. And biliverdin is converted to bilirubin by biliverdin reductase enzyme uh, where NADPH is used. And bilirubin here is water insoluble, which is an unconjugated bilirubin. Now, this unconjugated bilirubin is transported into the blood uh, to the liver and it is carried in the blood by binding to albumin. So, albumin binds to this unconjugated uh, bilirubin. So, now albumin bound unconjugated bilirubin is taken up by the liver. So, bilirubin which is water insoluble entering into the liver. So, in the liver what happens? So, 2 UDP glucuronic acid enter into this reaction done by UGT GT1A1. So, they both are attached, glucuronates are, two glucuronates are added to bilirubin making bilirubin diglucuronate. It is a water soluble conjugated bilirubin, I will write it as CB, conjugate. So, conjugation is going on in the liver. Now, this conjugated bilirubin is secreted into biliary canalic lice and that gets into the duodenum. So, in from duodenum, it goes into the jejunum, jejunum to ileum, ileum to colon. As they go from duodenum all the way to colon, conjugated bilirubin is converted into unconjugated bilirubin. So, I will write that here. BDG, bilirubin diglucuronide is converted to unconjugated bilirubin, UCB. And unconjugated bilirubin is converted into urobilinogen, UBG. And most of this urobilinogen is getting out of the intestine into the feces. So, 80 to 90 percent of that is getting out of the intestine into the feces and it is excreted as stercobilinogen which is converted to stercobilin. So, around 10 to 20 percent which undergoes enterohepatic circulation in that less than 3 milligram per deciliter is escaping that hepatic uptake and get into the blood and that basically taken up by the kidney and kidney secrete it out into the urine. So, urine urobilinogen which is later converted to urobilin and that gives that yellowish color of the urine. So, this is what is the fate of bilirubin which is made in the uh, spleen going to the liver from the liver it is going into the intestine and ultimately secreted out of our body in the feces predominantly as urobilinogen. Okay. So, that is what is shown here is in the figure here bilirubin metabolism under normal condition. So, let us get into this uh, details present in this figure. So, uh, UBG understand that is urobilinogen 1 plus indicates normal. Okay. So, UCB, UCB is unconjugated uh, bilirubin. So, 1 plus indicates normal. So, unconjugated bilirubin entering into the liver. So, getting conjugated in the liver. So, all that process we know now. So, conjugated bilirubin coming into common bile duct. So, 1 plus again it just indicates a normal 
concentration or normal amount of conjugated bilirubin that is again entering into the common bile duct. From the common bile duct enter into, uh, into the intestine. So we have 1 plus conjugated bilirubin in the intestine. Now that conjugated bilirubin is undergoing unconjugation process and ultimately making UBG. 1 plus UBG, urobilinogen. Now in that 80 to 90 percent of that urobilinogen entering into the stool uh, into the feces that's the uh, normal coloration of the stool there okay so and 10 to 20 percent of that urobilinogen it is taken up by the liver enter hepatic circulation so it is going back to the liver urobilinogen going back to the liver and in that less than 3 milligram is escaping that hepatic uptake and it is appearing in the urine urobilinogen in the urine Note that there is no conjugated bilirubin in the urine. Conjugated bilirubin in the urine is just zero because conjugated bilirubin never escapes that uh, out of the liver into the blood and also even if it is escaping, so it will be very very less that where it, it cannot be detected in the urine. So under normal conditions, the conjugated bilirubin in the blood is just less than 20% of total bilirubin. So that means to, out of total bilirubin, I will write it as TB, total bilirubin is it's con, uh, it's a combination of conjugated bilirubin plus unconjugated bilirubin. Note that conjugated bilirubin is less than 20%, unconjugated bilirubin is more than 80%. That's what is contributing to total bilirubin. UCB is more in the blood than CB. Okay. So, Whenever conjugated bilirubin in the blood is less than 20% at that time you don't find a conjugated bilirubin in the urine because the renal threshold for conjugated bilirubin it should be more than 20% of total bilirubin remember that and also under normal condition AST that is aspartate transaminase levels will be 1 plus because RBCs are breaking down and that RBC contributes to AST levels. And then ALT, alanine transaminase, alkaline phosphatase, that is ALP, and GGT, gamma glutamyl transpeptidase, they are all normal here. So, ALT indicates uh, liver issues. If there is any liver problem, that leads to elevated ALT levels, alanine transaminase. Or if there is any obstruction in the liver or in the common bile duct, you will see elevation of alkaline phosphatase or gamma glutamyl transpeptidase. So, since we are looking at a normal person here, so it's a normal condition. So, we don't expect ALT to be high because there is no liver disease. We don't expect ALP and GGT to be high because there is no obstruction. So, everything is normal. Conjugated bilirubin is less than 20 percent which is normal. So, that's why you don't see any conjugated bilirubin in the urine. Urobilinogen is found in the urine but because that's normally less than 3 milligram of urobilinogen will appear in the urine. So all this slide is basically explaining or uh, showing you what, uh, what is going on under normal conditions. So make sure we, you remember this, uh, this particular figure because we are going to use this figure to understand different types of jaundice in my uh, next lecture that is uh, different types of jaundice and how to diagnose and differentiate different uh, types of jaundice. So we are going to use this figure to understand the differences. So that is why it is important for us to know the content of this particular figure. All right. So let me just go over one more time. So under normal conditions, we have one plus unconjugated bilirubin, which is conjugated in the liver into one plus conjugated bilirubin that is entering into the uh, duodenum if everything is normal like conjugate uh, common bile duct is open and uh, uh, secretion is going on and all that. So conjugated bilirubin will be converted into uh, urobilinogen 1 plus urobilinogen 80 to 90 percent of that urobilinogen entering into the feces 10 to 20 percent it is going into taken up by the liver less than 3 milligram of that it goes into the urine so you see 1 plus urobilinogen. And in the serum value, so conjugated bilirubin is less than 20% of total bilirubin. AST is 1 plus, ALT, G, ALP and GGT, normal range. And also you don't see any conjugated bilirubin in the urine. So conjugated bilirubin in the urine is just uh, zero. It is undetectable. This is what is uh, normal finding that you are going to see here.
So before we go into uh, different understanding different types of uh, jaundice, so we'll have to see how we measure bilirubin. Bilirubin measurement. What is the basic principle of bilirubin measurement? So there is a test called Vandenberg reaction or Vandenberg test. So in this Vandenberg test, and Vandenberg test is the one that is used for measurement of bilirubin in the blood. So Vandenberg uh, reaction uses uh, a reagent called diazotized sulfonylic acid. Now diazotized sulfonylic acid can only react with conjugated bilirubin that is a water soluble bilirubin. So when we take a test tube and say consider that there is a serum in that test tube. So serum is there in the test tube and we want to measure the concentration of bilirubin in that test tube both conjugated and unconjugated. Note that this particular blood sample will have both conjugated bilirubin, I'll write it as CB and also it has uh, unconjugated bilirubin, I'll write it as UCB. So CB plus UCB contributes to total bilirubin, CB plus UCB is the total bilirubin, okay. Now when we add diazotized sulfonylic acid into this particular test tube, so as I told you already diazotized sulfonylic acid can only bind with conjugated bilirubin and it changes the color okay that means it is going to bind only with this conjugated bilirubin and color is changed so let's do that so i'm going to add a diazotized sulfonylic acid into the test tube okay and because it's going to bind with conjugated bilirubin so it's going to change the color of that particular test tube the color of the solution it will be changed to something else here so i am just adding little more, little bit of pink color in this test tube just to indicate that conjugated bilirubin is binding with diazotized sulfonylic acid so color is changed and we are going to measure that change in the color using spectrophotometer so spectrophotometer is done and we are going to get some value based on the optical density value we are going to calculate so let's say uh, the value that we got is uh, 0 0.2 milligrams per deciliter which is conjugated bilirubin so the conjugated bilirubin value we got here is uh, 0 0.2 milligrams so i'll write it here so already i told you tb that is total bilirubin equals to conjugated bilirubin plus unconjugated bilirubin so we have measured conjugated bilirubin now as 0 0.2 milligrams per deciliter now we will have to measure unconjugated bilirubin. So how to measure unconjugated bilirubin? So unconjugated bilirubin is water insoluble. So that has to be made water soluble. So for that we need to add something called as accelerator. So to measure unconjugated bilirubin we are adding accelerator and usually accelerator that is added is ethanol alcohol. Okay. So when you add accelerator, so I'm going to add accelerator now. So accelerator is added. So when the accelerator is added, so it's going to convert unconjugated bilirubin into conjugated bilirubin because it's going to conjugate that. So we have then again, so already this diazotized sulfonylic acid is already added. So what happens is there will be change in the color because unconjugated bilirubin is converted into conjugated bilirubin. So because now there is a conjugated bilirubin now UCB is entirely converted into CB. So it is going to react with the diazotized sulfonylic acid and the intensity of the color will increase now. So basically compared to the previous so the color will be increased and we are going to measure that in the using spectrophotometer and I am going to get a value of 1 milligram per deciliter. Okay. I have 1 milligram per deciliter. So what is that 1 milligram per deciliter? It is the total bilirubin because I am measuring everything in the same test tube. Already there was conjugated bilirubin and unconjugated bilirubin is converted to conjugated bilirubin. So we have a total bilirubin which is measured as 1 milligram. So how to find out unconjugated bilirubin now? So we have a total bilirubin. We know the value. We know the value of conjugated bilirubin already. So UCB unconjugated bilirubin equals to total bilirubin minus conjugated bilirubin that means 1 milligram minus 0 0.2 milligram so that will be equals to 0 0.8 milligrams per deciliter. So this is how we measure unconjugated bilirubin as 0 0.8 milligram per deciliter which is an indirect way of measuring unconjugated bilirubin that's why unconjugated bilirubin is referred as indirect bilirubin 
and conjugated bilirubin is referred as direct bilirubin you got to understand that sometimes uh, examiner will write conjugated bilirubin as direct bilirubin and unconjugated bilirubin as indirect bilirubin so we got to understand that there is something called as delta bilirubin delta bilirubin is a direct reacting bilirubin which is conjugated bilirubin covalently linked to albumin it is tightly bound to albumin so that type of bilirubin we call it as a delta bilirubin so this is all about uh, heme catabolism and then the transport of bilirubin from the spleen to the liver for conjugation process and from the liver after conjugation it is transported to uh, gall bladder from gall bladder it is transported to the intestine and in the intestine there will be bacterial oxidation of this bilirubin to make urobilinogen and urobilinogen is transported out of the intestine into the feces predominantly and rest of it will come back to the liver in that some of it will enter into the urine and goes out of our body as urobilinogen. So that's about it. Thank you.